I had to take a slight detour. When I was lifting this thing by the heat sink, the thermal grease actually came loose from the uh, this chipset heat sink. So I had to actually take the chi chipset heat sink off and uh, reflow it with the Arctic Silver, which is going to be a lot better than the crap they put on there in stock. I'll tell you that. That one I'm not going to worry about. This one is all good. Now it's time to put the CPU in. All right, we're here at the kitchen. <laughs> Go figure. With a motherboard in the box still, and uh, we're gonna unbox this Pentium dual core CPU here. We're gonna unseal the factory seal the uh, label there, which apparently I suck at doing. So I'm just gonna focus on getting it open. Open. Open, you bastard. Open. Jesus. A little hard to get open there. And here we are. There is the stock cooler, which is a load of garbage. Look how thin the heat sink is compared to this one. Big. Small. This cooler, I don't know how they can justify giving it to you with this, because the airflow is so much better on these because the fan is taller. <laughs> and you get a manual and Intel Pentium inside sticker. Which I don't plan to keep because I'll be upgrading it anyway. So Let's get the uh, processor out of here. I wrestle with packaging. Here we are. Here's the chip itself. Socket 775. And notice that these newer processors don't actually have pins on them. They have contacts. The motherboard has the pins. Very nice. So we're going to take this off. And there are your pins. cover up if I can. There we go. And we'll take this processor out of its little plastic shell and put it in there. Now just as you would with AMD processors, you follow the arrow and match the arrow to where it is on the actual board. Mm. Problem is I don't know where the arrow is, so I have to go by uh, the fact that there are missing pins down there and right up there, and they're also that same on the mother on the uh, processor here. So I'm going to judge it based on that fact, and we're going to stick it in there like that. There, that's nice and snug. Put that down. And now we're going to uh, fasten the processor in there. Just making sure I'm doing it right since this is my first Intel build. It pushes, it mashes that little thing down. What shoot at? Hook in, and that secures the processor. And of course, now we must prepare the cooler. Not that piece of shit, but this thing. As you can see, there's no heatsink grease on it or on the processor. So, do I have purifying bottles? No. Fantastic. This is a great alternative to those uh, purifying bottles. Uh, just get a bottle of Fantastic, spray it into a lint-free cloth and uh, wipe off anything to purify it. It works very well because it's antibacterial. This cleaner cleans everything. It's amazing. Although the heat, the uh, stuff on the uh, this chip here, I had to actually 
dig off of my finger now, as you, as is evident by all the, uh, yeah. Anyway, basically, spray some into the, spray some Fantastic into a rag and wipe off that and the top of the processor, making sure you don't get any in between there or on the board itself, because if you get any of that fluid into the board and it absorbs in there, it will warp the board and the layers will separate and, uh, yeah, bad things. So let's get on with it, shall we? All right, both surfaces have been purified with fantastic. Fantastic is fantastic, if I do say so myself. So let's get some uh, thermal grease, some Arctic silver, which is what I use mainly, and uh, get this show on the road. Now, the idea that more thermal grease is better is total horse shit. You're going to want to use... Wow, wow. Broken. <laughs> Derp. Anyway, you're going to want to use as little uh, thermal grease as you can. Now, you get a little dot of thermal grease, uh, like so. Stick it in the cent as close to the center as you can of the processor. That's all you need, just a little dot like that. Alright, then we move this over here. Getting the cap back on it. Just a second. Cap back on. Alright, now we have that on there. Now we position this thing. Now you can see here there are the screw holes. And these, diff much different than most of the Intel ones, actually screw in rather than use those plastic pegs that always break. So, what are we going to do? We're going to put this thing in. Yay. Now, I've never done this before, so bear with me. Line them up with the screw holes. It's pretty close. Uh, Alright, that's lined up. And, of course, we go get a screwdriver and screw them in. So let's go over and get the screw, my uh, handy-dandy screwdriver. Here we are. Now, I'm not going to bore you with screwing shit in, so... Alright, I forgot that I have to actually spread it around, so what I'm going to do... is get a plastic bag. Just a regular old sandwich bag. And use that to uh, spread it around a little bit. And that should work fairly well. Then I will reposition this thing. And make sure that it's worth, it's uh, going well. All right. I've screwed the cooler down. And of course, what I typically do with AMD builds is uh, I put the grease on just as a dot. Then I put the heat sink on and do this wiggle it back and forth a little bit. I'm going to do that for extra safety measure to make sure the flow is nice. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit. Just by the heat sink. And of course, plug the CPU fan in. And of course, in these ones that have four pins, you want to plug it in. These things have a little uh, housing on them. You want to plug it in so that housing fits into the housing on the board, which is fairly obvious, but some it kind of got me stuck for a while on the last time I did this. And there we go. We have the CPU reflowed and we have this chipset reflowed. So let's get on with the building, shall we? Alright, the computer's basically finished. Power cords everywhere. I have the SATA cables plugged in. All that good stuff. I got my PCI cards back in. And we will give this a test run, shall we? Now something I should mention about the hard drive security is that it has uh, tabs on both sides, which is kind of nice. And now, back to setting this thing back up so we can test it. Alright, we're back with the computer in here. Here's my setup here. I should show you guys my setup. I haven't really shown it on YouTube yet. And there's no lighting. You know what? I have this thing. I got both computers here. I got a Dell right there. Dell D Dimension 2350. 
Over here, I have the custom machine that we just built. It's installing Windows 7 on one of the drives right now. I started up Mint Debian, and everything worked. Just out of the box, boom. The nice part about Linux, it actually has well-managed hardware profiles. And everything is sort of, you know, in the kernel. Instead of it having to deal with tons and tons of drivers, the registry, all that crap. So you have to reinstall Windows. At least I do. But this system works, and I'm very happy. We'll give it a closer look at, uh, in another video. But for now, have a good one, everybody. Ciao. All right, we've made progress. We got Windows all started up, and we're installing the drivers. But there's something interesting in here <coughs> that I thought I'd read. Gigabyte Easy Energy Saver is a revolutionary technology that delivers unparalleled power savings with a simple click of a button. Featuring an advanced proprietary hardware and software design. Eh. The unique multi-gear power phase design of Gigabyte Energy Easy Energy Saver allows for the most efficient switching of the power phases depending on CPU workload. I'm guessing that's uh, enabling speed step. No idea. You can install single items, but I'm going to install all of them because I'm lazy. Derp. This motherboard, this motherboard uh, has really nice uh, software installation. That old AMD build is going to be what the Dell is now, and the, the Dell, as you can see here, is my TeamSpeak computer, which currently is running Arch Linux, which is one of my favorite distros of Linux. It's just excellent. And uh, this computer beats out that one by a long shot. This computer seems pretty good so far. I mean, I'm pretty impressed with this Pentium dual core. It's for being seventy dollars. It's very zippy, quite fast, if you ask me. <clears throat> it's uh, maybe slightly faster than the uh, AMD processor I had in this machine before, but I think that's because the AMD socket was a little out of date. It's an AM2 as opposed to uh, you know the AM2 Plus or an AM3, so the bus speed was probably a little bit slower. This, however, is an Intel 775 uh, uh, socket, so it's fairly it's fairly new, kind of old, but it's still it's a very solid socket and it runs pretty damn well. There you go. It's installing all the drivers. It's running on 64-bit Windows 7, by the way, just in case you're curious. And we'll come back once uh, all the drivers and crap are installed. 